Mike Leach looks to stake a claim amongst the Pac-12's elite with a win today. Chris Peterson hopes to return Washington to national prominence. Luke Falk, the walk-on quarterback, hopes to etch his name in Apple Cup history alongside the likes of Drew Bledsoe. Jake Browning, the young phenom, aims to prove he can live up to the hype. With a trip to the Pac-12 championship game hanging in the balance, the stakes of the Apple Cup have never been higher. Welcome to God's country, the high desert, also known as the Palouse. And inside Martin Stadium, a standing room only crowd awaits this year's version of the Apple Cup as fifth ranked Washington comes into Pullman to take on the 23rd ranked Washington State Cougars. Hi, everybody. I'm Gus Johnson along with my partner, Joel Klatt. And welcome to Pullman. We're simply put, folks, this is a playoff game for Washington State. If they win, they have a chance to play in the Pac-12 championship for a berth to the Rose Bowl. For Washington, if they win, they still have a chance right. to play for possibly a national title. Listen, rivalry games are always special. Every year, they're special. But when there's this much at stake, they become almost legendary. Here's the bottom line for all of these players on both sides. The next 60 minutes, they're going to live forever. That's why I love this game and I love this matchup. And I love the quarterbacks in this game as well. Luke Falk, when you watch him, you see some Tom Brady in. You do, because he manages everything out there. He's got more control of the offense on the field than maybe any other quarterback in college football. He decides when they run the ball. He decides when he wants to throw the ball down the field. He threw with amazing touch last week against a very good secondary in Colorado. He's going to need to duplicate that effort here today because he's facing a couple of very good corners and Sidney Jones and Kevin King from Washington. Then when you look at the Washington Huskies, they are led by a sophomore quarterback by the name of Jake Browning. He's a phenom, but has struggled at times this season. He's got to break out of that late season slump, Gus, and he's got the ability to do so. And more importantly, in a game like this, he has the weapons on the outside to do so. Namely, a guy like John Ross, who's one of the fastest wide receivers in the country. I'm sure they're going to target him down the field early in this game. This offense is built to go as the quarterback goes. So as Browning plays today, so go the Huskies. So we have one of the biggest rivalries in the Pacific Northwest as the Washington Huskies come into this game with everything on the line. Can they do it on the road against a tough and electric Washington State football team? As we get ready for kickoff at Martin Stadium, here is the winning look, sponsored by Coca-Cola. Welcome back to Fox College Football, presented by Jared, the Galleria of Jewelry. Washington State, Washington, the Apple Cup, ready to go down at Pullman. Time now to join the third member of our team on the sideline, Shannon Spink. Well, Gus, I think we can all agree when it comes to rivalry games, we're all secretly hoping for a little trash talk before the game. It's kind of like the cranberry sauce from your Thanksgiving meal yesterday. You don't really need it, but it makes things a little sweeter. Well, both of these teams were shut down to the media this week to try to prevent that. However, last Saturday after their game, Washington's defensive tackle, Elijah Falk served up this little morsel. He said he hated the fact that Cougar quarterback Luke Falk did not play in this game last year because of that concussion. He said it gave Cougar fans an excuse for the 35-point loss. He wants Falk in this game. He wants it close and tough, and he wants no excuses at the end of four quarters. Thank you, Shannon. Falk 100%, no excuses on either side today, and a perfect day for football in the Pacific Northwest. Nice and chilly, 45 degrees. As Washington State won the toss deferred, the Huskies will receive. Eric Powell will send it away. John Ross, the dangerous one, the All-American, back deep. Washington State, Washington, the Apple Cup, and it's underway. Here's Ross, brings it out of the end zone. 
gets to the 20 and dragged down from behind at the 25. Tackled by Peyton Pallor. And a couple of things you need to know when the Huskies have the rock. I'm going to start with that dangerous one. John Ross, explosive wide receiver. He's a threat to score every time he touches the football. I believe in this very series, this first series of the game, they're going to target him down the field. The most important part, Jake Browning's got to throw it on time. And then for Washington State, Robert Barber was back last week after a lengthy suspension. They need him desperately in the middle of this defense. He's 305 pounds, and in order to stop this Husky run game, he's got to play his best. First and 10 of the 24 for Washington. Miles Gaskin in the backfield. And they'll give it to Gaskin on first down. He breaks the tackle, tries to get outside. And a whistle. Prior to the snap, false start. Offense number 98. Five yard penalty. He played first down. Martin Stadium. The smallest stadium in the Pac-12 with 32,952 capacity, but they can really get loud here. And they're right in front of the student section down on this left side of the field as you're watching on television. That was Will Disley, number 98, just got a little too antsy on the first snap. First down and 15 of the 19 for Jake Browning. He'll throw it far side. Ball caught by John Ross. He gets up the sideline and finally knocked out of play at around the 31. Jalen Thompson with the tackle. So Jake Browning, what makes him special? His preparation. He's one of the most prepared players in the entire country. He's a book hound, if you will, in a football regard. 37 to 7 touchdown interception ratio. Part of the reason for this late season slump of his has been the fact that he's not throwing the ball on time. Watch that in this first series. If he's getting it out quick, they run efficiently. Second down and four after the 11 yard gain. Levon Coleman in the backfield for the Huskies. And play fake. That ball thrown down the seam and incomplete intended for Chico McClatcher. Well defended by Jalen Thompson. And that was great timing from Browning and a good route from McClatcher, but just a better play from Jalen Thompson. Had them a week ago at Colorado. I was so impressed with this true freshman from Downey, California. Great coverage ability in the back end from his safety position. Third down and four. Cougars with a chance to get off the field. Browning in the gun. Coleman the pistol back. He goes in motion. Browning looking with time over the middle and caught for a first down. Drew Sample found the sweet spot and he picks up 11 yards. And he had time in the pocket to survey the defense, set his feet, and throw a strike down the middle of the field. Browning fourth in the nation in passing efficiency overall. And he trails only Oklahoma's Baker Mayfield among Power Five quarterbacks. Those are the struggles you're seeing, though, 55% in the last two games. But early on, he looks solid. First down, UW at the 41. They throw to the far side. Looks like a pass. Wide open receiver, Darrell Daniels. Still on his feet, and he tumbles down inside the Cougars' 10-yard line. That's a 49-yard gain. Another nice pass by Dante Pettis. Dante Pettis is a guy that is so athletic, he does everything. He's your man in motion, and then he's going to be far enough behind the line of scrimmage, the backwards pass to Pettis, and then he just very calmly throws it right down the field to Darrell Daniels, a senior from Pittsburgh, California. Almost stayed on his feet and got in the end zone. Chris Peterson, known for trick plays going back to his days at Boise State. First down and goal at the nine. Ball start, 98 offense, five yard penalty, first down. It's Will Disley again, 98, 6'4", 272 pounds. They list him as kind of an adjuster tight end type. He's really more of a sixth offensive lineman and that's what these rivalry games can do. The emotions can get the best of you as a player. And just a little too amped up here early. So they back it up to the 14-yard line. First down and goal. Play fake. Near side. McClatcher. Screen. Gets inside and goes down at the four. Maybe the three. Robert Barber with the tackle. Chico McClatcher finally healthy. 
and he's explosive a lot like John Ross and those little inside screens that they love so much here at Washington. He's one of the guys that they try to target in that spot. But here inside the five yard line we'll see if this Husky run game can get something going and this offensive line can get them into the end zone. First uh, second down and goal rather at the four. Gaskin. And he goes down at the two. Jalen Thompson stands him up. Boy, they let that play go on for quite a long time. His progress was clearly stopped for a while before they actually blew it dead. And before the rest of those offensive linemen could push him into the end zone. Good job by the officials here, but in these third down situations this is when you want to get your quarterback either outside of the pocket on a run pass look where he can choose or you try to single up a wide receiver and play the matchup game the right receiver he may be looking for John Ross at the bottom of your screen number one third and goal of the two they give it to Gaskin and he gets in the end zone Miles Gaskin with the two yard touchdown run and Washington scores on their opening series. What you're going to get is just down blocks and then you're going to get a block in here from 88. He swings back backs the defensive end out of there and that's an easy touchdown for Miles Gaskin. What a great opening drive for this Washington team. Remember that started with a first and 15 after that false start. That's an excellent job. Cameron Van Winkle comes in to attempt the extra point. Seven to nothing. Huskies marching it right down the field and scoring. Seven plays covering 76 yards. They eat up 322. Now we bring you the Go RVing sights and sounds of the game. This week we're in beautiful Eastern Washington on the campus of Washington State. Had a chance to move around a little bit yesterday, Joel. So many nice people, such a beautiful atmosphere. I tell you, this is the Palouse. This is one of the most beautiful places you could go. And mm -hmm. friendly people out here, and they were hyped about this Apple Cup from the moment our wheels touched down in Spokane. Miles Gaskin with his tenth rushing touchdown of the season to give Washington a seven to nothing lead. Fossum, James Williams are back deep. And this will be Fossum inside the five. And Fossum up to the 20 before being wrestled down at the 21. Ezekiel Turner with the tackle on special teams. So a couple things you want to know when Washington State has the ball. You would think that Mike Leach and this team is all about throwing the ball, but they've got a great stable of running backs led by Jamal Morrow, part of a balanced running back trio with James Williams and Gerard Wicks. We're going to see a lot of rushing from this Cougar team. And then on the defensive side, you've got Buda Baker for Washington. They have not been able to get to the quarterback for a couple of games until last week when they started using Buda Baker in more blitzing and pressure looks. He's a versatile player. Washington State uses three running backs. Wicks in there now. They throw it underneath and it's caught. John Thompson with the reception. Remember River Craycraft is out for the season with a knee injury. River Craycraft had 200 com career completions or excuse me receptions as you look at Falk's numbers 87 career pass touchdowns. This is a great player folks. Get ready to watch this guy drop it in there. Throws with uncanny touch, Gus. Second down and three at the 28. Falk a big guy. He's 6'4. Here's the shovel pass. And James Williams trying to push the pile forward for the first down. Looks like he may have it. Boy, they got awful lucky here because Elijah Qualls, number 11 for Washington, a defensive tackle. He fell right into that play. Almost busted it up right before he could get there. See, watch it. He gets right there, and he's basically got the running back before he could get loose, but Williams is still able to get the first down. Washington State lost to Colorado last week in Boulder, 38-24. First and 10, and they'll hand it to James Williams. The three running backs, James Williams, Jamal Morrow, and Gerard Wicks. Saw Mooching with the tackle. And as a trio, these guys are as productive, actually more productive than any other running back core in the Pac-12. Mike Leach is very, very 
proud of that fact. This is a team with three players with 400 plus rush yards this season. Second down and nine after the one yard gain at the 33. And they'll stay on the ground. Morrow slashing and gashing as he crosses the 45, picks up 13 yards, and a Cougar first down. I thought the ball came loose, and they are going to give it to Washington. Watch as Morrow gets hit. The ball comes he's loose. He's the immediately the looking for ball, it, and it falls Washington. right into first DJ down. Bieber's arms. He doesn't even realize it's there until late. Grabs it with that left arm. Taylor Rapp with the hit. Boy, Rapp is such a good true freshman, too. Look at this physical tackle right on the ball. That was clearly loose. You see that Morrow was looking around for the ball right away, and it was just DJ Beavers, the redshirt freshman, number 15, that fell into his lap. So our first turnover of the game, Chris Peterson's team will have great field position. 14 fumble recoveries this season, leads the Pac-12. First down and 10 for Jake the Snake, Browning. After a turnover, look for a shot deep. They pitch it. Gaskin trying to get outside. And he'll pick up maybe seven yards on the play. Jalen Thompson there to usher him out of bounds. Gaskin, such an explosive player from that tailback spot. And he might not be the prototypical between the tackles tailback, but what they do as an offense here at Washington, he's perfect for inside, outside the screen game. He's an explosive player. Second down and two with the 38. Browning looking far side, delivers on time. Great catch, John Ross out of bounds. Jake Browning throwing a 10-yard strike. What Washington does is they're just going to call the out route. And then if they get bump or tight coverage, Ross will take off on the go route and convert the out route. But if there's soft coverage, like Washington State was just playing, he just runs out there for an easy completion and a first down. Those converting routes are very hard to defend. John Ross caught a career-high 12 balls last week against Arizona State for 95 yards. Trips at the bottom of your screen, first and 10. Backside throw, caught McClatcher with space, and he picks up a first down. Chico McClatcher, over the last six weeks, has been battling through a knee injury. He leads the Pac-12 in yards per catch at 22. McClatcher, just a sophomore from the state of Washington. A lot of kids playing in this game from this state, and you know that they've been watching and caring about this game their entire lives. Now an opportunity to impact it on the field. With a chance to advance to the Pac-12 championship game. First down and 10 at the 15. Play fake, Browning incomplete. Intended for Aaron Fuller, that ball thrown high. And again in coverage, Jalen Thompson. I'll tell you, every week you see him get better and better on film. See how he goes up and defends the hands. He enrolled in January as a true freshman, so he did get to participate in spring drills. Both brothers played football at Cerritos College, so an athletic family. And he is doing so well here late in the season for the Cougars. Second down and 10. Browning setting up a screen and he'll dump it down. Well defended by the Cougars. And such a smart play from Browning because you know you don't want to take a sack and yet when you've set up a screen pass, Gus, you've got linemen downfield. So you can't throw that ball out of bounds down the field or past the line of scrimmage. Therefore, it's got to be burned at the feet of the running back. That's exactly what he did. That shows you that this kid is completely in the game mentally. Good pressure there from Robert Barber right up the middle as well as Isaac Dotson. Third down, 10 of the 15. Levon Coleman checks in at running back. Browning over the middle. Caught high. What a job by John Ross. He just plucked that ball out of the air. Look at the strong hands from Ross. That ball was thrown all the way above his helmet. That's incredibly hard to do as a wide receiver. First down and goal. 
Inside the five. Browning the slant pattern deflected at the line of scrimmage incomplete. And it looks like Peyton Pelour got a hand on it. He was originally on a blitz, but realized that he couldn't get there, so he stopped and then jumps up to try to bat down the ball and is able to do so. Peyton Pelour, the junior from the state of Washington, leads this team with 80 tackles. He's a legacy Cougar. In his 70s, his father, Scott, played linebacker, also played five seasons in the NFL. His grandfather, Arnie, played end in the 50s. His great-grandfather played as well. And some movement on the offensive Ball line. 52 offense, five-yard penalty, second down. That's three false starts for Washington. And again, it's not a large crowd. Capacity just over 32,000, but it is noisy here. And it was something that Washington was concerned with. Also, you're always going to see Washington State move. Their defensive line is constantly shifting, or as the coaches would say, they stem the defense late. Washington was concerned about that, thought about going to a silent snap count. We'll see if they go to it. Second down and goal at the eight-yard line. Coleman tries to get outside, has some space, touchdown Huskies, but another flag on the play. Offensive radiate, 10 yard penalty, second down. And that's Drew Sample, called for the hold. The tight end, here he is right out, out here, and as he engages, he doesn't need to hold. This is what's going to drive a coach mad. See how Coleman's going to get the edge, and he's got the speed, but then the hold from Coleman there, or excuse me, Drew Sample. Great call by the official, and already now four penalties for Washington, and the last two so costly, taking them out of almost a sure touchdown range inside the five-yard line. Instead, they face a second and goal at the 18. John Ross, the receiver at the bottom of your screen. Browning. Looking, Browning in the end zone, touchdown, Pettis, what a throw. It was a great throw, but he had forever to throw this ball in the pocket. The offensive line did a remarkable job. Watch him wait and wait and wait. No defensive back can cover for that long. Pettis kept going on his right. It was actually the second or third window that he kept running through in the end zone before his quarterback found it. Dante Pettis came into this game tied for sixth nationally with 12 receiving touchdowns, now 13. Multi-dimensional player coming up big. The Washington Huskies all business as we start the Apple Cup. Fox College Football presented by Jared is sponsored by the all-new LG V20. Life's good when you play more. And by Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. 14 to nothing, Washington leading Washington State in the Apple Cup, and the Huskies came into this game outscoring opponents 134 to 23 in the first quarter, 279 to 71 in the first half, and they're off to a brilliant beginning. Yeah, and I told you in the opening, it's easy for Browning at times because he's got great skill position players, and they've played well so far on the outside. Caleb Fossum will get another shot from the four. Head of steam, Fossum. Dragged down at the 45, he almost broke it. So coming up, Cool Hand Luke and the Cools back on home. Brunel releases the ball, Bailey wide open. Play fake going into the end zone. Touchdown, Washington State. Has it on the way. Good! John Anderson drops it through. The agony ends in overtime. And the Walla Walla Wonder in attendance. That's right, Drew Bledsoe, the former Washington State legend. First overall pick in 1993 here to watch his alma mater. First down and 10 at the 44. Here's Williams breaking it back. 
with space. And Williams gets close to midfield before being stopped by Buda Baker. I talked earlier about the games when the stakes are high become legendary. Well, that 92 game lives in lore. A legendary game here, the Snow Bowl on the Palouse as Drew Bledsoe beat the defending national champion Washington Huskies here in the Apple Cup. Second and five of the 49. Luke Falk going up the seam. Caught down at the 15, Robert Lewis. A 36-yard gain, and once again, Falk drops it in the slot. I can't tell you how difficult it is to make the over-the-shoulder throw right down the middle of the field. That is an unbelievable throw from Luke Falk. His idol is Tom Brady, and quite often this season, he's played like Tom Brady. First down and 10 at the 17. Falk steps up, fires far side. And out of bounds goes Gerard Wicks as he'll lose yardage on the play. About three. Mike Leach has had a lot of great quarterbacks, but he says that the one that manages the game best is Luke Falk. And a lot of times that has a bad connotation to it amongst the quarterback crew, if you will. But I got to tell you, this guy is so good because he allows them to have success in the run game. He understands how to attack a defense where they're weakest at all times. Second down and 12 at the Washington 19. Play fake, fought with time, pumps. Now breaks contained, throws across his body incomplete. At the 10 yard line, intended for Isaiah Johnson Mack. He just couldn't hold on. Drops plagued them a week ago in that loss in Boulder to Colorado. And this one would have been very near a first down. Wow. That is very lucky for Washington and DJ Beavers, number 15, that he wasn't flagged there for a target as he went right with the crown of the helmet to the face. Third down and 13, likely two down, four down territory, rather, for Washington State. Falk. Over the middle. And another drop. C.J. Dimery this time. And these drops, like several last week, have come over the middle of the field. That's the part of the field that they miss River Craycraft the most. He was a slot receiver, the inside receiver for Washington State. And as a senior, he was such a sure-handed player, understood how to exploit those defenses there as well. So Eric Powell comes in to attempt a 37-yarder. He's 6 of 12 on the year, but he's made 6 of the last 7. Gets it away. And perfect. Washington State settles for three. 5.49 to play, first quarter, 14-3, UW. Fox College Football presented by Jared is sponsored by Verizon. It's always a great gift on Verizon. And by Nissan, premier partner of the Heisman Trophy. The Apple Cup, a series that dates back to 1900. This is the 109th meeting in the series. Washington leads it as you take a look at the scoring drive. Six plays, 36 yards. Cougar settling for the field goal. Well, that's C.J. Demery, and certainly could have been more. A couple of drops there. They're going to be very frustrated with... Robert Lewis with one of them, C.J. Dimry with one of them, and it's one of the things Mike Leach talked to us about yesterday, that when they had their opportunities, they had to capitalize, and that was certainly an opportunity missed on the last series. So Eric Powell will kick it away. John Ross, the deep man for the Huskies. Here's a line drive kick. They want to keep it out of Ross's hands, but they kick it out of bounds, so the... Huskies will get good field position. Ruling on the field, we have a kickoff out of bounds. Ball we placed at the 35-yard line. First down. All right, let's go to Greg Wolf for an LGV 20 game break. Gus, thanks. Rumors swirling around Tom Herman's future. Number 20, Houston trying to complete a 17-point comeback, but Riley Ferguson finds Anthony Miller. 
10 yard touchdown with just 19 seconds left in Memphis. Pulls off the upset 48 44. Gus, Joel, back to you. All right, Greg, so they beat Louisville last week and then lose to Memphis. Houston up and down season, first and 10 at the 35. Another penalty flag. Fourth false Private start. Snap, false start. Offense number 73. Five yard penalty. First down. That's Andrew Kirkland. Watch as Washington State shifts their defensive line. That's what's going to make. See, and that's why the flinch happens. Now we've had four false starts. This was a huge concern for Washington. I believe they're going to have to go to a silent snap count very quickly here because these penalties are not going to allow them to be efficient offensively at first and 15. From the 30, empty backfield for Browning. He's under pressure. Throws to McClatcher. McClatcher crossing the line of scrimmage. And finally wrestled down at the 39 as he jitterbugs his way to a nine yard gain. One of the most impressive things that I think a skill position player can possess is the ability to make defenders miss in tight spaces. And McClatcher certainly has that. You saw it executed on the last play. Really didn't look like he had much, and all of a sudden he goes for about nine yards. Browning. Off to a good start, 8 of 12, 94 yards and a touchdown. Second and six, he'll throw it again. Winds up, goes deep, looking for Pettis. Oh, what a catch! Pettis, touchdown! Huskies, 61 yards! Darian Molden covering, and looks like it's going to be interference. That's interference, defense number three. Penalty is declined. Result of the play, touchdown. There's Molden in coverage. There's the left hand that draws the flag. Not a push off. Great call by the official. And Pettis winds up in the end zone. Huge play, an underthrown ball. And Pettis just out muscled Molden for the touchdown. Two touchdowns already for Dante Pettis. Two catches, 79 yards. And now the Huskies. Take a 21 to 3 lead. It was a severely underthrown deep ball because he threw it late, which he's been doing for weeks now, but he's going to get away with it here because of the remarkable ability of his wide receiver, Dante Pettis. Multi sport star, great soccer player, long jumper, 200 meter sprint specialist. And he goes up and gets it. What a play from Dante Pettis. The dynamic dogs, as they call them. First teammates in school history with 10 plus receiving touchdowns each in a single season. Now Ross 15, Dante Pettis 14, 29 combined receiving touchdowns leads all FBS duos this season. And that's what makes it so difficult to defend. You can't roll the coverage towards John Ross because Dante Pettis will beat you. And then as soon as you're trying to defend Dante Pettis, guess who? John Ross beats you down the field. And oh, by the way, you better tackle well in space because Chico McClatcher can hurt you in the middle of the field. Luke Falk with a lot of work to do early on. 5.04 to go in the first quarter. Fossum back deep. But this is James Williams. And great special teams coverage by the Huskies as they get down there quickly. Walker with the tackle on special teams. The junior from Arlington, Texas. Next weekend, the Pac-12 and Big Ten championships are only on Fox. It all starts next Friday with the Pac-12 championship with coverage beginning at 8 p.m. Eastern. Then next Saturday, it's the Big Ten championship. Coverage begins at 7 p.m. Eastern. It's all on Fox, or you can watch it live on Fox Sports Go. And while it's not official, the Big 12 championship game on Fox as well as Oklahoma and Oklahoma State tangle in Bedlam for the championship in the Big 12. First down and 10 at the 9. Snap infraction, 58 offense. Half the distance to the goal, first down. It's Riley Sorensen, the senior from Rancho Santa Margarita, California. He was a high school teammate of fellow senior and injured receiver River Craycraft, three-year starter. Unbelievable story of perseverance for Riley Sorensen. 
First down and 14. Falk. Nobody home. Rolls out of the pocket. Looking. Throws down the field. And incomplete. Gabe Marks, the intended receiver. One thing about Falk, he will be tested today because the corners for Washington are some of the best in the country. Well, and he faced a couple of great, really three great corners last week for Colorado. And the only time that we've seen this Washington State offense struggle this year is when they're facing a top 20 pass defense in the country, UCLA and Colorado. Well, now this is the third top 20 defense that they're facing as far as pass defense, Washington, and you're already seeing very small windows to throw the football into. Second down and 14. Falk to the sideline. And that ball caught by Isaiah Johnson Mack. He gets a foot down and out of bounds. This is such an important third down. There's so much at stake here. Not only is it 21-3 and all the momentum sitting with Washington, but also if you're having to punt, from right near your own goal line, you're going to give excellent field position to the Washington Huskies. This is an incredibly important play for a first quarter third down. Cougar receivers have to hold on to the football. Third and five at the 14. Here comes a blitz. They pick it up. Falk. No, they don't. He's sacked inside the five. Keyshawn B. Area. Well, you're going to try to get the block right here. And Jamal Morrow gets Bieria for a moment, but then Bieria stays on his feet. It's a mark of a great linebacker. Never leave your feet, never get chopped down to the ground. And then a relentless effort towards the quarterback, and he gets Falk to the ground inside the five-yard line. What a great play for Washington there on third down. So the Cougars will have to punt it out of their own end zone. Kyle Sweet. Aussie rules style punter. Delivers a deep one. Pettis picks it up. Pettis hits the sideline. Pettis tries to cut it back and does. And finally tackled at the 45. A 67-yard punt and an 18-yard return. He's so dangerous in the punt return game. He's got the Washington record with five punt returns for touchdowns in his career, two of them this year. One, Gus, at a game you and I were at, basically won the game at Utah with a punt return late in the fourth quarter, and now sets his sets up his offense with another series where they're getting great field position. They have not had to work very hard to move the football into scoring range all day long. So the Huskies will start at the 43. Ross in motion. They give it to him on the jet sweep. Ross picking his way forward and gets to midfield. Marcellus Pippins comes up with the tackle. And Alex Grinch, the defensive coordinator for Washington State, is going to ask for First and get a timeout. timeout. Washington State, 30 second timeout. He was so unhappy with the effort last week, so disappointed. As coaches will tell you that what you see on film, you're either coaching or allowing. And so to see the effort that his team gave in a loss to Colorado was disturbing for him. And Mike Leach right now calls a timeout to conduct essentially a team meeting because he is seeing the same thing he saw a week ago. A lack of concentration with the drop balls on offense. And so far, a lack of effort on defense for the Cougars. Let's go downstairs to Shannon. Well, you know, Gus and Joel, it hasn't really been that much about effort listening to Alex Grinch talk to his guys. It's been more about just focus and, and, and playing with emotions. He said a couple of times, you guys just need to calm down. And that team meeting, a team meeting took place in front of the bench with the defense. I heard him scream out, come on, guys, our A game right now. Thank you, Shannon. Second and four. John Ross looking for the first down, and he has it. Darian Moulton knocks him out of play and it looks like the officials will spot the ball a little short of the first down. Now you'll see the extra tight end, Will Disley, come onto the field. Will Disley has been on the field now for two snaps. He's jumped offside as a false start on his first two and he's back in the ball game. To the right side of the tight end. Third down and short. Quarterback sneak and a first down for the Huskies. 
so far, Gus, Washington is calling plays and operating on their terms. We haven't seen Browning behind the sticks in a crucial long yardage third down position and have to execute down the field. He's throwing on his terms. It's the exact style that Chris Peterson mastered at Boise State. Washington with 229 yards of total offense in 12 and a half minutes. First and 10 at the 45. Browning all day to throw the ball. And he put it right on the numbers to Chico McClatcher. What a beautiful throw, a 22 yard gain. Well, you said it, partner, all day to throw. And as the wide receivers work open, look at how much time they have to work open into those spaces. I mean, was this he a lot of bounds? You know, it did look like it was close, but real time, it looked like he was in, and it was definitely in there. Remember, if going backwards, his whole foot needed to land in the green turf. There was no exception there. It couldn't be toe to heel and land with the heel on the white. So an excellent call there by the officials. McClatcher, four catches, 55 yards already. First down, let's see if they start going to Gaskin. They do. And he'll gain a half yard. Well defended, Peyton Pallor. Who may have the coolest hair in college football. Yeah, he certainly I'd like does. to see you with that cut. No, no, mine would look. Come mean, on, grow it out. I would have like the straight, stringy, like Kid Rock stuff. <laughs> Not solid. Talking about my homeboy there, Kid Rock. <laughs> The D Town, baby. That's right. Detroit. Peyton Pelour, 235 pounds, really great instinctive player, but they need to force a field goal here badly. Second down and nine at the 21. Browning steps up in the pocket, wants to throw it. Does caught John Ross again. And he gets out of bounds. Another first down for the Huskies. They look so well prepared today. If you're going to run zone coverage, you've got to understand that they will be exploited in the back end if you can't put pressure on the quarterback. And right now, Browning, even though he had to step up on the last play, he's been given time in the pocket, and the wide receivers have been allowed to operate in the back end, find those weak spot spaces, and exploit them. 12 of 16 for 196 and two touchdowns. Remarkable start for Browning. In the first quarter, first and goal of the six. Browning throws the fade in the corner to touchdown John Ross. That's as good as you can throw it, ladies and gentlemen. They fake a little run play, and then he just drops it right in the bucket. Like he's thrown it into a trash can. John Ross, touchdown. Wow, Washington, what a first quarter performance, 27 points. Mike Leach and his coaches stunned on their home field as Cameron Van Winkle comes in to attempt the extra point. And it's good. 28-3, UW, fifth ranked team in the nation. And they know, like it. and they know that some, some things can really shake out for them over the next two weeks. Well, there's no doubt. You know, you look at where they're sitting at at number five as Ross catches his 16th touchdown, but at number five in the playoff ranking, Michigan-Ohio State playing tomorrow, very easily moves into that top four with some impressive performances, and they're putting that impressive for performance on today so far. 28-3 in the first quarter. Reminds me a lot of a few years ago here in Washington State, they jumped out to a 31-0 lead. And they're playing that well again today. Washington State led by a great football coach, Chris Peterson. Only Urban Meyer has won a higher percentage of his career games than Peterson at 82%. Fastest to reach 100 victories. Doing so in 117 games. How will the Cougars respond? Fossum make that James Williams up the sideline with running room and he crosses the 30 up to the 33. Let's go to Greg Wolf in LA. Greg, what do you got?
Well, Gus, of course, Charlie Strong's future very much in question at Texas, and this won't help. Kenny Hill, four-yard touchdown run. TCU leads Texas 7-3, second quarter, a game you can see on FS1 right now. Gus, Joel, back to you. All right, thank you very much, Greg. 28-3 is our school. Washington State will start from their own 33-yard line. And they hand it off to Wicks. And he'll get to the 36. JoJo McIntosh bringing him down. It's about as well as you can play in the first quarter of a rivalry game. How about those Huskies? 274 yards in total offense in the first quarter. Twenty-eight to three, Washington leads Washington State as we start the second quarter. What a dominating first quarter performance! As you take a look at the stats, two hundred and fifty-two yards. Yeah, the KFC stat, stat comparison: thirteen rush yards for Washington State, just not going to cut it. Second down and seven. Cougars throw it over the middle and it's caught. Tavares Martin with the reception will gain three yards. Well, pretty obvious that this is a drive as the next couple are going to be that Washington State just needs to have some success. They've got to find themselves some points. They've got to find themselves in the end zone. They've got to execute much better, in particular in the middle of the field. Third down and fourth to 39. One thing you know about the Cougars, they can score points in bunches. Williams running it. Not a lot. On third down, the area with the tackle. That'll bring up fourth down. What's interesting about Washington, there's only three players on that side of the football. That's generally a look that Washington State's always going to run that direction. Falk controls that, and yet they're still able to stop the run. And now forcing Washington State into a position where they've got to go for it on fourth down. They need two yards. And a timeout called by the Cougars. Did you see this coming? I thought that the, the team that had the potential, the more top end potential was Washington. Certainly their rank suggests it, their 10 and one record suggests it, but they weren't playing at this level for the last few weeks. In particular, a game that we saw them against USC. What's more shocking is that Washington State has been in Every single game that they play, no one has done this to Washington State. They lost that game, the USC in Seattle, 26 to 13. And now the Cougars will do the smart thing and punt the ball. Dante Pettis, the deep man. And he signals for the fair catch. Muffed it, but got it back. So Jake Browning and the Washington offense playing lights out. They're back on the field after this. A time-honored tradition here in Washington State is Senior Day. Every season, the outgoing seniors are honored for their contributions to the football program and the university. Our traditions of the game is sponsored by Dr. Pepper. It's a college football tradition. Here's River Craycraft. And we talked to Coach Leach yesterday about how much this young man has missed. And he tried to downplay it a little bit, but you're watching today and you know that they miss this kid. First down at 10 of the 18. Not just miss, they miss him badly, Gus. Here's Gaskin running the football. Mata Afa with the tackle. But that's the thing that seems like it's kind of gone away a little bit is the Washington running game. Well, they were so good early in the year. Now they still average over 200 yards a game running the football. Fifth in the conference, 38 in the FBS. But 
I, I still believe that they should commit to it a little bit more. You know, a lot of times they're going sideways, doing the reverses and everything. They're a good running team if they stick with it. Second down and seven of the 21. Browning hit as he throws, and that's caught by John Ross. Ross making people miss, and he'll get close to the first down. He was awful close to being down right when he caught it and kind of slipped, but he kept, kept himself up, found a seam, and then moves the chains. This is what I was talking about as he spins out and kind of goes down. Boy, that was close. That left knee, awful close to being down on the ground, which would have presented Washington State a much better chance to get off the field, obviously. It would have been third and about six. Ross's last three games, 26 catches for 457 yards. First and 10 of the... 28 yard line. Gaskin trying to get outside. Bottled up and taken down behind the line of scrimmage. Isaac Dotson. Dotson, a junior from Bellevue, Washington. Didn't play last week against Colorado, but now finally healthy. 52 tackles on the air, including five tackles for loss. And this is something they struggled with a week ago is when they had three players in the backfield, they missed the tackles, but Dotson's able to get them to the ground. And now playing on more of their terms here at second and long. They need 13 at the 25. Browning hands it to Gaskin and he slips in the backfield and falls down. Boy, he had a huge hole there if they don't get tangled up. Here's the foot as you see it just went up and kicked Browning kind of in that left knee. Look at this hole right there. I mean, th this is out the gate. If he's able to stay on his feet, well blocked, that would have gone for about 15 yards before he was touched. Huskies faced with a third down and 16. Cougars desperately need to get off the field. Browning to the sideline. Pettis with the catch. Pettis done taken down. Nice open field tackle by Marcellus Pippins. And finally, a little emotion and a little success for this defense for Washington State. Nice job by Pippins hanging on there as Pettis looked like he was just about to break out of that tackle and possibly run for a first down. But a great job by the Cougar defense here at getting off the field and stopping the initial bleeding. Tristan Viscano will punt it away from the 15. Caleb Fossum is the deep man. End over end kick. Fossum, no, make that. Williams catches it on the move. Morrow make it to the corner. And down at the five for Jamal Morrow. A 41 yard punt and a 65 yard return. I think Washington got confused because look, Fossum is 83. He's back deep. And Morrow was the up man, and he's actually the one that fielded the punt, and then he found some space and got loose. That's exactly what they needed here for Washington State. Down 28 to 3. They had to get off, off the field. They get a defensive play, and then a special teams little explosion from Morrow sets him up here at the six-yard line. First down and goal. Cougars flinch again. Full start. Gosh. Offense, 61. Five yard penalty. First down. You know, these rivalry games are so emotional, but you cannot play football on emotion, in particular as an offensive player. Offense is a game of execution and details. And so you've got to somehow remove the emotion of the rivalry and the senior day out of your preparation and focus on the details and execution. And the Cougars have not done that thus far. First down and goal at the 11. Inside handoff, Moore. And he's thrown out of bounds. On the flip side of that, this defense for Washington, they're playing their best football here in the last month. Remember, without Azeem Victor, one of their better players, a linebacker, DJ Beavers is 
in for him, number 15, but they are flying around right now, tackling well in space and winning the line of scrimmage up front. Second down and goal at the six. Wicks straight ahead. And he'll get inside the five yard line. Greg Gaines with the stop. Cannot kick a field goal here. It's four down territory. Bottom line, 28 to three. They've got two downs. I would not be shocked at all if they handed it off again. Third down goal of the two. Wicks and Williams in the backfield. Another handoff to Wicks and Washington stuffs the play. So that brings up fourth down and goal. And it doesn't look like the Cougars are going to bring on the field goal unit. Greg Gaines with a nice stop on the run. He's got a little cutback lane, but right there when you're trying to cut off your inside foot rather than your outside foot, it has a tendency to slip out from under you. Fourth down and goal at the two. They hand it off right side. Washington says they didn't get in. Ruin on the field. The runner stops short, stop short of the goal line. Wicks. Washington. What a great play from DJ Beavers. He makes the tackle from the backside, number 15. And Washington with a huge hold. Fox College football presented by Jared is sponsored by Progressive. Handing off big savings to you. And by T-Mobile. Switch to the network built for unlimited data. Twenty-eight to three, the Number last play. The ruling on the field stands. First down, Washington. And the Huskies keep them out of the end zone. They did review it. That's big number eight, Binning Potoai. It looked like he was going to get in, safe for the back of the leg of seventy-three, Eduardo Middleton. That's where he ran into him and just wound up an inch short. So the Huskies face with the first and ten and. Jake Browning will give him some room to work with. This is that point on the field. I felt like as a quarterback, part of game management is also managing the situation. This is a backed up situation. If you understand that a false start is only going to back you up half the distance, so at most a yard, go on two. Because the free five yards that it gains you is so beneficial in these types of situations, trying to draw the opposition offside. Second and nine. Browning to the sideline. Ross with the catch. Lost it. Washington State. They jump on it. Jalen Thompson with the recovery. Shalom Luani, the heart and soul of this defense, a senior playing here on senior day. Comes in number 18 right there, helmet right on the football, knocks it loose, and the true freshman jumps all over it. They desperately needed a big play and got it from their senior and their leader, Shalom Luani. So the Cougars get the football at the Washington 18. Luke Falk. Back on the field, each team with a turnover. Morrow in the backfield. Falk. Ball caught, but not a lot for Gabe Marks as he drops it. Buda Baker defensively. They're dropping into coverage, just rushing with three and four defensive linemen, and it's making it very difficult for Washington State to find the openings because they're just reading the eyes of Luke Falk, and he's got nowhere to go with the football. 
A loss of one, second and 11. Falk to the sideline. Caught and out of bounds. Crawls Gabe Marks. Again, these third downs are almost like second downs at this point. The way that this game has gone. Four down territory here, red zone for Washington State. Just come away with one field goal in their two possessions. Third down and one. Falk steps up, wants the first down. And they say he stopped at the one yard line. A first down for the Cougars. Morrow, can he get there? Yes, he does, but a flag on the play. I thought there was 12 men on the field for Washington. Legal substitution on the defense. That penalty's declined. Is that going to play touchdown? So finally. Washington State gets into the end zone. They capitalize off the turnover. 28 to 9. We told you this Cougar team can score points in bunches. They just needed that spark, and that's why Chris Peterson is so concerned. Great scramble from Luke Falk to set up that touchdown. Got him down to about the one yard line. Eric Powell. 28-10. It all started because of this. The fumble. Shalom Luani knocks it out. And then Jamal Morrow pays it away. off. Coming up on the State Farm halftime, is it Charlie Strong's last stand in Austin? The sights from his Longhorns meeting with TCU. The Cornhusker can still win the Big Ten West, must take care of business in Iowa City, and how the Pac-12 South will be won. Gus Joel, see you at the break. All right, Rob, thank you very much. Washington State showing some signs of life now. 28 to 10 with 6.07 to play in the first half. They were able to capitalize on that turnover. Let's see if that sparks their defense. Eric Powell sending it away, John Ross. And Austin Joyner ready to return. Short kick, Ross picks it up at the 15. Burst of speed, and Ross, flag on the play, gets up to the 30. Peyton Pelour with the tackle on special teams. They had a block in the back. Pretty obvious one. So. Legal block in the back, 22 receiving team. 10 yards from the spot of the foul, first down. All right, let's go to Greg Wolf in Los Angeles for a game break. Well, Nebraska win and Wisconsin loss tomorrow puts the Huskers in the Big Ten championship game next Saturday on Fox, but they got some work to do. C.J. Beathard hits Riley McCarron 77 yards for the touchdown in Iowa. Leads number 16, Nebraska 13-3, second quarter. Gus, Joel, back to you. Hawkeyes with that season-defining win at home against Michigan. Now trying to do the same thing to Nebraska. First down and 10 at the 15. Gaskin running right with a crease. And a fall forward for what looks like a first down. Jalen Thompson there. They give him nine, so it's second and short. And that run game, that's where you go to establish order. As an offense, as soon as it gets away from you in any direction, the way to get it back, in particular on the road, is allow those five guys up front to get after it in the run game. They do it on first down. Second down and one at the 24. Coleman. The reverse, Ross, is he going to throw it? No, he's going to run it up the sideline with the burst. And Ross knocked out of bounds by Sean Broughton. A 31-yard gain. The trick plays again for Coach Peterson. 
And the most crucial block was actually thrown by the quarterback, Jake Browning. You're going to see in the backfield, you're going to have Washington State. Isaac Dotson in great position, and there's Browning. He gets the block and allows Ross to get the edge. You guys block, Joel? Only in a must block. <laughs> <laughs> First down at 10 of the 45. Browning. Pettis wants to throw it again. Does. Incomplete. Gaskin, the intended receiver. Darian Moulton covering. You know, it's so hard to go back to the well a second time. This is the exact same formation and, and look that they went to earlier in the first quarter on the first series. And now Washington State was ready for it. And Moulton goes up and does an ex excellent job of breaking up that pass. I just say this, Washington's too good and too skilled to have to trick you down the field. At some point, the trick plays have to exit. And you got to go out there and just play big boy football and run the ball down the field. Second and 10, rounding underneath McClatcher, first down. You know, their base offense is good enough to run most people right out of the building. And so I always find it odd that they, it seems like they, they have to run trick plays like it's their philosophy almost rather than when they need them. You know, they did it when they needed it at Boise State. And I feel like now at Washington, they're just trying to live up to those expectations rather than just call it when needed. First down and 10 of the 34. McClatcher in motion out of the backfield. Browning. Under pressure. Browning delivers. Out of bounds. Darrell Daniels, closest man to the football. And Daniels was wide open for a moment, but Browning's eyes were on the other side of the field on the primary route structure. You watch Daniels, he's on that right side as a tight end, and Browning wasn't looking. He was open there for a moment, but then as the safety came closing over, Number four, Charleston White, Jr. from Amarillo, Texas. Darrell Daniels wasn't able to get the ball on time. Daniels not happy. Second and 10 at the 34. Those wide receivers never are, Gus. <laughs> <laughs> Coleman. First down, Washington. As he slides down at the 22. I don't know, the trick plays, it seems like it. they loosen up the defense. Well, you know, when you can run the ball like this, and they've got a true freshman in there, Nick Harris doing an excellent job, a true freshman from California, and you can open up holes rather than tricking the defense or softening them, it's better to break their will. That's what you're trying to do on offense, and that's what a, a run like the last play is able to do. 72 rushing yards for the Huskies. First down with a 22. Coleman again, hits the edge, breaks it inside, high stepping, touchdown. Now that's a will breaker. 22 yard touchdown for LeVon Coleman. At some point, you just gotta let the dogs eat up front. And that's what they did on that series. How about this block? He's gonna come around the edge. Jake Elderkamp, a senior. He comes around, seals it right there, and Coleman's gone. Excellent downfield runner. Doesn't start because Gaskin is so talented, but Coleman is an excellent back, averaging over eight yards per carry, and he gets in the end zone. Now that's a series of football. Fifth rushing touchdown of the season for the team's second leading rusher. And the Huskies respond in a big way. Fox College Football presented by Jared is sponsored by Dr. Pepper. It's a college football tradition. And by KFC. KFC's new $10 chicken share is a bucket for two. KFC, it's finger licking good. 35 to 10, Washington. And we were talking about breaking Will's perfect example. Washington State scores, they finally get on the board, and then the Huskies come right back and smack them in the mouth. Yeah, so much of football is answering the bell. You know, when you're put up, you're back against the wall. And Washington has done that today. And that's the mark of a great team. Make no mistake about it. The Washington Huskies are a great football team. Not a good football no, team. No, 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 no. They're a great football team. 
They deserve that top five ranking for Chris Peterson, who's done a remarkable job there in his short tenure as the Huskies head coach. They've got top line talent, but I think what gets overlooked is that they can also power up and run the ball like you just saw in that last series. They didn't do it against USC and it cost them. And that ball right through the wickets of Caleb Fossum. Let's check in with Shannon. Gus and Joel, just something to keep your eye on. After that last possession, Luke Falk came over to the sideline. He was limping, favoring his left knee. Now, he did come into the game with a brace on that left knee from a previous injury, but he's been working it out, stretching that left knee the entire time he's been on the sideline. And remember, Falk didn't play in last year's Apple Cup. Cougar fans will argue that the 45 to 10 loss they endured in last year's Apple Cup might have been different if Falk would have played. But you know, Elijah Qualls, as Shannon reported earlier, says that wouldn't have happened. First down and 10 of the 25. John Thompson. It's Taylor Rapp with the tackle. Boy, this guy is a good player. He's a true freshman in Bellingham, Washington, and the break that he gets just attacking the receiver. Five yard gain, second and five. Morrow Williams in the backfield. Falk steps up under pressure, delivers. Incomplete. Gabe marks the intended receiver, but there's your man, Joel Klatt, Taylor Rapp. Well, they look like Superman on that play. Marks is gone. This is a beautifully thrown ball. Marks ran a great route. I mean, a great route. Look at this. It's going to drop right in his hands. And at the last second, Taylor Rapp jumps in there. An all-state athlete at all levels. Number one safety prospect in the state of Washington. Picked up this system very quickly. Couple of interceptions on the year, and you can see why. Third down and five at the 30. Falk looks back side. Here's a screen. And a first down for the Cougs. Tavares Martin. This second half is going to be interesting, Joel. Watching State will get the ball to start the second half. If they can put points on the board right now, it'll give them some momentum going into halftime. Yeah, they've got to have this double up right here where they're trying to go down and score with as little time as possible to get that ball back with the first possession of the second half. Cougars with one timeout. First down. Here's a handoff. Williams. <laughs> You know, we have not heard a lot from Gabe Marks so far here today. Just a couple of catches for nine yards. It speaks to the quality play of these corners for Washington, Sidney Jones and Kevin King. Second down at six at the 40. And a timeout call by the Huskies. 30 second timeout, Washington. First of the half. Talking about Marks, he's the 13th receiver in FBS history to reach the 300 catch plateau. Became the Pac-12's all-time leading receptions leader a couple of games back, passing Colorado's Nelson Spruce. Held in check though today. He has been, you know, and the outspoken guy has been held in check by two of the better corners in the country, Sidney Jones, a junior, number 26, Kevin and, King. and Kevin King, the senior. You know, both of these guys are going to be very highly rated by the NFL, and then in large part because it's their ability with length to play with their hands and be physical at the line of scrimmage. Not many guys get a free release on Sidney Jones or Kevin King. Jones, one of the top quarterback prospects for the NFL draft, second and six. And a handoff, Williams with room. And James Williams picks up 12 yards. Buda Baker finally bringing him down along with Taylor Rapp. And a great decision by Luke Falk there. The middle of the field was wide open. He checks to the run play and it gets big yardage. 138 to go. First down at 10 at the Washington 47 for Washington State. Falk drops it off. Here's a screen. 
And James Williams taken down. Another nice tackle. Buda Baker. DJ Beavers. I know it's difficult to block Buda Baker in space when, but right here, it's, I mean, it's a great play. And Eduardo Middleton can't get that block on Baker, and he's able to get back, cut back, and get the tackle. Second and seven. Falk sliding. And incomplete. Tavares Martin tried to catch that with one hand. And I have no idea why. It was right on his right shoulder. We saw that from Washington State a week ago as well. And Mike Leach has got to be frustrated with that. I mean, just put two hands up and you're going to have a first down. Third down and seven. At the 44, they're two of six on third down conversions. in the pocket over the middle caught Tavares Martin first down Cougars and a flag you know but because the pass was floated over the middle I thought that that timing made it very difficult for Washington to stay off of the back of Tavares Martin Holding, 21 of the defense, 10 yards from the previous spot, automatic first down. So here's the catch. This is not where the foul occurred. That timing was actually great. That was the back end by Kevin King, but what happened was Taylor Rapp was called for holding. Falk was rolled up on after Shannon told us that he was limping around the sideline. So we'll see how he's feeling now with a fresh set of downs. At the Washington 34. As the team ahead under two minutes created a foul, the ball will go on the snap. First down for Washington State. Falk underneath Marks. And Marks gets out of bounds at the 25. JoJo McIntosh. Nice little play there. Good yardage and the ability to just jump out of bounds and stop the clock. Nine yard pickup, second down and short at the 25. Falk under pressure, shovels it out, caught James Williams. And he'll be dropped for a loss of about a yard. Damian Turpin. Washington State. And because he had to shovel it, Gus, that's brought him back to the middle of the field. He didn't get the first down and causes Washington State to use this final timeout. Watch as Falk is going to have to get up in the pocket. And you're actually going to see Marks is wide open right there. But because he's got pressure in his face from Vita Vea, all he can do is get outside and then try to flip it to Williams. Doesn't get a lot on it. And then Williams just has to come back to the middle of the field. And then at that point, if he dives forward for a first down, the clock is going to stop. He doesn't, and they've got to waste the timeout. So now you've got to have a couple of play calls ready, because even if you complete the ball across the middle and you get the clock stopped for a first down, it's going to start very quickly after they get that down marker set. And you've got to be ready to go with another play call or ready to go up and kill the clock by throwing the ball into the ground. Don't forget the State Farm Halftime Show is coming up with highlights and analysis of this game and lots more. Third down and two at the 26. Empty backfield for Luke Falk. Falk looking. Nobody now delivers. Caught at the nine. Gabe Marks found a soft spot. Clock stops. To reset, Washington State quickly to the line of scrimmage. 28 seconds to go. A 17-yard gain, first and goal of the nine. Falk, dancing, Falk, back throw, picked off. DJ Beavers.
Beavers in for Azeem Victor after Azeem Victor broke his leg a few weeks ago against USC. And just an ill-advised throw from Falk. There are three Washington Huskies there waiting for him to throw that ball. As easy of an interception as you're going to get. And a huge mistake from the junior quarterback from Logan, Utah. So the Huskies will take over at the 20 and take a knee. Squandered opportunity at the end of the first half for Washington State. But Browning was the key, 17 of 22. 243 yards passing and three touchdowns. John Ross, eight catches for 80 yards and a touchdown. And Falk will head into the locker room and join a dejected group of Cougars. Well, that's a sick feeling for a quarterback, knowing that you've got to get points there before the half, can double up, get the ball to start the second half, and throw an ill-advised Ill interception like that. He will not be happy at halftime. Let's go downstairs to Shannon with Coach Pete. Well, Coach, let's start with your defense because they were most recently out. I've seen a couple of fist pumps, and when you're, we've seen some of the things that they've done, what has impressed you most about the battles that they're winning? Yeah, they're just playing hard, making plays. You know, it's a really good offense we're going against, so they're playing hard. Speaking of offense, your offensive line has really set the tone. What else stands out to you about your offensive play? Yeah, we've been balanced and making plays to run and pass. We've got to continue it. Long game. Thank you, Coach. Okay. All right, we're at halftime. Washington leading Washington State in the Apple Cup 35 to 10. Right now, let's go to Rob Stone in the studio. Welcome back to Fox College Football presented by Jared, the Galleria of Jewelry. Pullman, Washington, where the Washington Huskies, the fifth ranked team in the nation, played an excellent first half, and they'll head into the second half, leading it 35 to 10. Gus Johnson, along with my partner Joel Klatt, and Joel, I tell you what, the Huskies look like the number five team yeah. in the nation, and one reason is because of the brilliant play of their young quarterback. And in particular, early, you know, on the road in a rivalry game, you always wonder how a young kid is going to react, and he reacted beautifully. I thought Jake Browning early in this game, first and foremost, he had great time in the pocket, and he was able to get the ball down the field accurately to his big play receivers. Dante Pettis a couple of touchdowns, and then he dropped a beautiful ball right in the bucket to John Ross for a touchdown. The defense also came to play early in this game. Critical plays, turnovers, a couple of them. They stopped them on fourth down at the one yard line right before the half. DJ Beavers gets the interception. This Husky defense was sensational in the first half, really holding Washington State in check for the most part as we take a look at our Verizon first half stats. Washington State has only thrown the ball for 102 yards. That's a big credit to that Husky defense. And of course, the Husky offense was really doing anything they wanted to do. Gus that entire first half. How do the Cougars get back into this game? First and foremost, they have to find a way to pressure Jake Browning in the pocket. And then offensively, they just have to capitalize on their opportunities. They've had a couple of nice drives and come away with nothing. So we start the second half. And Washington State crosses the 30. Let's go downstairs to Shannon. Well, Gus, nothing too complex from Mike Leach in terms of what his team needs to do to get things going in the second. He said his guys are overthinking things. He says they're making mistakes, getting lined up in the wrong spots. As far as that interception that he saw his quarterback Luke Falk throw at the end of the first half, two words, be smart. All right, Shannon, thank you very much. First down and 10 at the 31 for Luke Falk. And the Cougars down. In this game on their home field, Falk to throw on first down to the sideline, and it's caught at the 39 by Tavares Martin. Something that they weren't able to do was get a lot of easy first down yardage in that first half. We didn't see a lot of these second and shorts, Gus, and they're able to come out here on the first series of the second half and start that way. 
Nine yard gain. Here's Falk. Drops it off underneath to Wicks. And Wicks will not pick up the first down. Great open field tackle by Buda. Man, Buda Baker is such a good player. Just a junior from Bellevue, Washington. Thorpe semifinalist, midseason All American. You can see why there. I think the greatest trade a defensive back can have is the ability to tackle in space. On third down, Wicks looking for the first down, and he has it. So important for this Washington State offense to not just have a positive series, Gus, but put it in the end zone. Washington State now playing with pace. Trying to get something going, manufacture some success or a feeling of momentum. First down and 10 at the 43. Williams spinning as he crosses the 45, gets to the 47. It's been well chronicled. When you see a run play from this Washington State team, generally it's Luke Falk controlling that from the field. Mike Leach has the pedal to the metal on the sideline, calling pass plays, and then when the look necessitates, Falk will hand it off. Second and six. Falk to throw with time over the middle. And caught. Nice grab at the 35 by Robert Lewis. Had to come back and get that ball. Just over DJ Beavers, who had that interception at the end of the first half. Watch this, just over his fingertips. And you're right, partner. Great adjustment by Robert Lewis coming back to his right shoulder for the completion. Gain of 18, first and 10. At the 35 of Washington. Falk rolls out of the pocket with time up the sideline. He had a man momentarily. Now takes it out of bounds. At the 32, DJ Beavers chasing him out of bounds. Well, we've seen this song and dance before. Four trips for Washington State inside the 40-yard line in the first half. They only came away with 10 points. That's two and a half points per trip inside the 40. Conversely, Washington scored a touchdown on each and every one of their possessions that they moved inside the 40-yard line. Second and seven at the 32. This time it's Williams. And he'll spin and get, get inside the 30. A gain of four. The defensive line has done a great job today. It's a combination of Greg Gaines and Elijah Qualls. Damian Turpin right there, a senior from Compton, California, number 66 on the last play in the backfield. Third and three. Once again, it's Williams. And Williams with the leg drive, but he will not pick up the first down. So, an early second half, fourth down decision will be made as Damian Turpin comes up with the tackle. I don't think he's going to spend much time on this. This is that point in the field just inside the 30-yard line that it's almost a foregone conclusion. All the way back to his days at Texas Tech, speaking to Mike Leach, that he's going to go for it here. Fourth down and two at the 26. Williams... With Falk in the backfield. Ah, Washington State flinching, Joel. Ball start, 76 offense. Five-yard penalty, fourth down. Trying to get the easy way for a first down. Now watch that defensive line. They were kind of jumping around, and Falk wanted the snap. Looked like the only guy not ready to go on that play was Riley Sorensen in the center. So instead of a fourth down and two, it's fourth down and seven at the 32. Morrow and Williams, Washington State, they've made a lot of mistakes today. Here's Falk. But a first down here. What a throw. Gabe Marks with the catch. If you're going to get that against press coverage, look at that tight coverage, and you're going to try to run just a little stop route, the ball has to be thrown right on time. And it was there for Marks. Out of his break, ball's on his chest. First down at the 24 of Washington for the Cougars. And the handoff to Williams. Tell you what, Joel, I like this Washington team. A couple of weeks ago, when they got ready to play USC, I said, 
Here's a team that if the semifinal started today would have to play Alabama and Alabama would have their hands full. Didn't look like that for the last couple of weeks, right? Partner and Washington State certainly got fortunate there as the ball pops out and right back to the running back. Second down and nine, Falk dancing. Now runs out of the pocket, throws on the run and out of bounds. Kyle Sweet, closest man to the ball. Good coverage down the field from Washington. You can almost say that on every single play. That's Sidney Jones, number 26 up top. Just perfect. Even when the wide receiver tries to get away and come back to the ball, he's right there. That was Isaiah Johnson Mack, the true freshman, number five. Third down and nine of the 23. 12th play of the drive that started at the Washington State 31. Here's Falk, delivers underneath. Caught at the 19 by Gabe Marks, not enough for the first down. He gains four. But again, Falk is operating under the assumption, and you know that he's been told, you've got four downs. And so he's fine throwing the ball under the chains, even on third down, as we've got a Husky down here that's Ben Burkirvin. College football presented by Jared is sponsored by Coca-Cola. Taste the feeling. By Allstate, proud supporters of college football. It's good to be in good hands. And by Wendy's, always fresh, never frozen beef. 35 to 10, Washington leading Washington State. Cougars, this is their opening drive of the second half faced with a fourth and five. Here's Falk to throw. Falk in trouble. And he goes down. Ben Burkirvin. Second sack of the game for the Huskies. But there's a flag on the play inside the five yard line. It's a bit of a late flag, and now a discussion going on amongst the officials. Obviously a huge call here. During the play, holding number 20 of the defense. Wow. Half the distance from the previous spot. That play results in a first down. That's Kevin King, the senior, the corner. Here he is on the outside. He's working against Tavares Martin, and there's that right hand that just hold him, and then he held again with his left hand. I think that was an excellent call there. You can't allow that much contact down the field. Have to allow the wide receiver some opportunity to separate, and Kevin King did not there on the last snap. So the drive stays alive for the Cougars. Falk in the end zone, and he threw that ball high. And another flag. A lot of flags in this game. Yeah, you know, they're personal foul, tripping. Offense number 25, 15 yard penalty. Replay first down. That's Jamal Morrow. And he was trying to come across the formation and he's going to be trying to block the defensive end here saw him watching and see how he goes down and goes into the shins with his feet and kicks him right on the knee he actually morrow hurt himself a little bit and he's going to have to come off the field but great call by the officials there on top of it morrow being looked at on the sideline first and goal at the 24. Falk. Delivers underneath and another drop for Washington State. They've had a case of the drops the last two weeks. Tavares Martin this time. Nothing drives Mike Leach crazier than a lack of concentration offensively. He believes this to be a beautiful game, a game of execution, and that's what he requires from his team. Mainly that passing game, the quarterback and the wide receivers to see, to see these four drops. This drives a guy like Leach crazy. Second and goal of the 24. Falk. Sideline right on the money and out of bounds inside the 10 for Gabe Marks. 
That ball just jumps off his arm. It does. And, you know, you made the comparison to Tom Brady, and there is some elements of his game. He's got that tall stature in the pocket. He can stand there and get the ball down the field with good accuracy. He controls the game from an audible perspective, getting him into runs and passes. It's 20 of 28 for 155 today. This is a guy that's going to have to have his best quarter and a half of football if he wants to come back in this Apple Cup. Third down and goal. In the end zone, six. That's a tough Brady throw right there. If the legend is watching, I'm sure he's smiling. Gabe Marks. I love the timing. Watch his eyes, because he's going to be sitting right here, and it doesn't look like he's going to have Marks early. Marks is going to break, and the timing, he throws it to an open window, not to an open man. That's a big-time throw right there from Luke Falk for a touchdown. We told you that Washington State, because of the prolific offense of Mike Leach, can score points in bunches. Marks, one of the greats in the history of the Pac-12, scores 35-17. Fox College Football presented by Jared is sponsored by Cadillac. 35-17 now, Washington with the lead as Washington State scores on their opening series of the second half. Luke Falk going to his playmaker. Gabe Marks had four catches on the drive, including the touchdown. And Marks now with eight in the game for 71 yards. That's a Really good receiver, ladies and gentlemen. That's the type of guy that could play in the league for a long time. I wouldn't say he's overly fast or that he's physically more dominant than others. He's just a guy that understands football and zones and man coverage. He understands how to separate himself, and he catches the ball. He's reliable with his hands. I'm sure some NFL team would be very happy to see him in camp next year. John Ross, the deep man. And he'll let this one go out of the end zone. Tomorrow, it's a full slate of college football on Fox and Fox Sports 1. First, on FS1, Kansas State takes on Kansas at 11 Eastern. Then at 3.30 Eastern, it's 18th ranked West Virginia versus Iowa State. Later on Fox, a big one in the Pac-12 South is 22nd ranked Utah battles. 9th ranked Colorado at 7 Eastern. And it's all live on Fox Sports Go. Tell you what, Joel, when you look into the faces of these Cougars, you get the feeling that they're getting ready to get locked in. Well, they're going to need to be locked in because this offense was not stopped the entire first half. First down and 10. Gaskin trying to get outside, cuts it back inside, and is dragged down. Nicely done by Peyton Palua. You know, the message for this Washington State defense is pretty simple. There are two main elements to playing successful defense at any level. Can you line up correctly, and can you play with uncommon effort? Now, if you want to throw an asterisk on the end, can you arrive at the ball angry? Alex Grinch is a guy that was preaching effort all week long. Does his defense give him that effort now? Second down and 10. Here's Gaskin running again. Tries to get outside, does, and is close to a first down. Those man-on-man -man situations is the spot where a guy like Gaskins is so dangerous. He was locked in a one-on-one -on -one battle right there with Peyton Palour, the leading tackler for Washington State, and his quickness won the day. He just bounced outside and set up a nice short yardage opportunity here for the Huskies. Third down and two. And this is the Wildcat. And Aaron Fuller looks like he's going to be short. The true freshman, Aaron Fuller, it's a direct snap, and he's going to take off. They're trying to run the option. He chooses to keep it, and that right elbow clearly comes down before the 35-yard line. And that is a huge win for Washington State. Remember, it's where the ball is at, not where the elbow touches, but because of the way he was spinning with that ball on the Washington side or the offensive side of his body, I believe that was a pretty good spot. 
Fossum and Morrow back deep. Fossum with the catch at the 17 yard line, a 48 yard punt. But more importantly, the Cougars with the ball again. The last time the Cougars beat the Huskies was four years ago in this building. The Huskies missed an opportunity to win and the Cougars took advantage. In overtime, Washington State completed the largest comeback in Apple Cup history and beat the Huskies 31 to 28. Can it happen again? Overcoming an 18 point deficit. But in order to beat this dynamic Washington team, this Cougar squad has to play with an enthusiasm unknown to mankind. <laughs> Here's Falk looking, drops it off in the flats. And Wicks lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. Connor O'Brien right there. Channeling a little Jim Harbaugh there. Yeah, yeah, he's a pretty good coach. Well, I guess so. We'll see tomorrow. Yes, we will. Second down and 10 at the 18. Husky fans will be watching that game intently if they're able to hold on here today. Second and 10 at the 18. Falk fires incomplete. John Thompson just couldn't hold on. That's the fifth drop for Washington State. And yes, this is a drop. I mean, that is an unbelievable pass right there. I mean, the anticipation of windows is what I'm so impressed with with Luke Falk. He can throw with touch out in front of the wide receiver, anticipate the hole in the defense, and Thompson's unable to come with it. Remember, John Thompson's trying to replace River Craycraft. Again, this is a, a huge area where they needed him in this ball game, that slot receiver. Third down and 10 for Falk. In trouble. Delivers. Caught. And a first down. John Thompson says, give me the ball again. Craycraft loving it, rooting on his teammates. And how about the pressure? Falk is under pressure, and he's backpedaling a lot like that play where he threw a pick in the first half, but this time he finds an outlet, and he throws it right on the numbers of John Thompson, who then runs for a first down. Looking just like his idol there, Tom Brady, first and 10 <laughs> at the 31. A fadeaway. That's right. <laughs> Sideline caught. And Isaiah Johnson Mack met and dropped immediately by Buddha. Tell you what, this Buddha Baker, Kevin King, Sidney Jones, JoJo McIntosh, secondary ball players. Their closing speed is what jumps off the tape and then live when you're watching them. It looks like something is open for the offense and then all of a sudden, bang, the defender is there closing down the space. Second and 11 at the 30. Falk to the sideline again, close to the first down as he goes to his playmaker, Gabe Marks. Marks starting to become very active now. This is what I love about Marks. This is what I was talking about, about finding separation, is that when he's running around, he finds it at the top end. A gain of 11. Marks. First down and 10 at the 41. Falk pumping. Looking. He's got a receiver downfield, but didn't see him, and he's sacked by Damian Turpin. Turpin. Closed quickly, but this is what he was trying to look down. Robert Lewis was open in the back end. Falk was trying to get him the ball, but that pressure was just too much. And he was unable to get his feet under him and get that ball down the field to Robert Lewis. Okay. Got to give Damian Turpin a lot of credit there. Good hustle coming from his de defensive tackle position. Second and 16 at the 35 for the walk-on quarterback, Luke Falk. Here he goes again. Over the middle, caught. First down. Tavares Martin dropped the last one, but he held on to this one. This throw is just so good. I mean, he's basically on his back foot here. Watch the space, because there's very little of it. He just kind of throws it into a weak spot in the defense, trusting his wide receiver to get it. 
and it's caught for a first down. What a throw and a good catch there by Tavares Martin. First down at the 46. Falk looking sideline incomplete. Marks again the intended receiver. Sidney Jones talking about two pros right there. Watch this. They were actually, Gus, trying to set up the little shovel pass. You see how the wide receiver skipped out like it was supposed to be a screen and down the field. Marks was even surprised that the ball was there. He was trying to block. So Falk got away with burning the ball down the field with linemen downfield. 35-17, second and 10 at the 46. Wicks Williams in the split backfield. Luke Falk sets up. And caught for first down. Gabe Marks, the most prolific receiver in Pac-12 history. All right, when he threw this ball, I thought there is no shot. Marks is coming down in bounds. Watch this. His right toe. Oh my goodness. That's as good as you can do, folks. He's stretching the effective width of the field by getting up there and getting his toe in bounds. 10 catches, 95 yards, and a touchdown for Gabe Marks. First and 10. Washington State at the Washington 33. Here's Falk. Drops it underneath to Williams. And he's chopped down by Buda Baker, as well as Taylor Rapp. Baker showing you that sprinter speed. So many of these Washington Huskies have a track background. Taylor Rapp's played sensational today as well. 11th play of the drive that started at the Washington State 18, second and nine at the 32. Williams in motion. Luke Falk up the sideline for Marks and incomplete. Make that Tavares Martin the intended receiver. Kevin King covering. Now, great coverage from Kevin King. He shrunk the area that Falk has to throw that ball. As a defensive back, if you're a young defensive back out there, what you want to do is use the sideline to your advantage. Squeeze the wide receiver all the way to the left side, and there's nowhere to throw it for the quarterback. Third and nine to the 32. Luke Falk over the middle. Caught first down and more. Gabe Marks, ball player. As he flexes after making that grab. Well, he should flex. This is a great route. Watch Marks. He's going to kind of come in and then find the weak spot. See his inside release. Then he finds the soft spot, and he looks towards his quarterback. It's good execution there from Marks. First down and 10 of the 14. Coolhead Luke locked in now. Looking. Drops it off in the flats. Williams makes the first man miss, second, third man miss, and he's finally down inside the five. Here comes Washington State, down 35-17. And they've got it popping now. First down and goal. A touchdown here. The handoff. James Williams knocked backwards by Greg Gaines. Greg Gaines is going to get double teamed here by the center and the guard, and he's able to beat both of them, splits it, and he makes the tackle. What a play from Greg Gaines, 318-pound sophomore from California. Second down, goal at the three. Wicks in the backfield for the Cougs. He goes in motion. Falk. In trouble. And gets rid of it. That's the play he wish he would have had at the end of the first half when he threw the interception. Yeah, the ill-advised throw at the, at the end of the first half. I'm sure it was in the back of his mind there because as he got into trouble with Connor O'Brien and Ben Burkirvan bearing down on him in the backfield, you could tell he just knew, I got to burn this ball out of the back of the end zone. And he was able to do so and save this ball inside the five. Four down territory? I think so. It's Mike Leach. Third down goal at the three. They hand it off. Williams. And he's short. So we'll see if Mike Leach decides to go for it on fourth down. 
I think he certainly will. It's his nature. Great call by the official. Williams just short. This guy puts the pedal to the metal. He's not going to stop now. So fourth down and goal at the one. 17th play of the drive. Wicks is in the backfield. They give it to him. And Washington stops him cold. How about that? Elijah Qualls. Buda Baker said nada. And the Cougars turn it over on down. Thirty-five, seventeen. I'm going to ask you a question. What's up? There's a great explanation, <laughs> and you know it, and it's a very technical explanation as to why Washington State can run the football in the middle of the yeah. field, but can't do it when they get on the goal line. Well, remember, I told you Leach doesn't call run plays. Well, he does inside the five, right? And, and here's why. In the middle of the field, they only run it when they've got enough blockers to block all the defenders on that side. But at the goal line, because the nature of goal line defense, that's never in your advantage. So once you call, they never run without what I would call the run ratios until they get inside the five, which is a big reason why they don't run with success inside the five. I don't think that was too complicated. You explained that extremely well. I was trying. There's a water bottle thrown from the stands. Please reset the play clock to 25 seconds. So when you're not practicing against running, you know, running team like Washington, they'll practice running against a defensive front that is difficult to run against. Washington State doesn't do that. So when they get inside the five, it's totally new to them. Another whistle. The ball was not put in play. Replay first down. Well, they're going to need to change the play call. Chris Peterson can't be happy about this, and he's not. He's all the way down by the 20-yard line screaming at the officials because you just tipped your hand. They saw the play. So now they'll have to change the play call. And inside the two-yard line, that's a precarious spot to be. First down at the two. And they'll hand it off to Gaskin. And it'll give him some room. But let's go back to the great defensive stop by the Huskies. Well, you got to give a lot of credit to the two defensive tackles here, Greg Gaines and Elijah Qualls. Look, they don't move anywhere. They played on the Washington State side of the football. They did not get pushed back into the end zone. If you don't get pushed inside the two-yard line, you don't score. And for the second time today, Washington, on a fourth down situation from inside the one, Stops Washington State. Give a lot of credit to that Husky defense. They've been sensational today. That's the end of the third quarter. Coming up the four, 35 to 17. It's starting to get interesting now, folks. Start of the fourth quarter, 35 to 17, UW. Huskies faced with a second and six at their own six yard line. LeVon Coleman in the backfield with Jake Browning. Here's Browning to throw it. Finds Coleman looking for the first down. And he will not get it as he's tackled by Darian Moulton. So that'll bring up third down and short for Washington. And this is where Jonathan Smith, the offensive coordinator for Washington, young guy came from Boise with Chris Peterson. This is when the pressure is squarely on him. Even in a short yardage situation, this is a crucial conversion opportunity because of the field position you would likely give up if you're unable to convert. Third down and two at the 10. McClatcher goes in motion. Browning finds McClatcher. He breaks it across, gets upfield, picks up the first down. Chico McClatcher stopped by Isaac Dotson. But that's after he gained 14 yards. Watch these linemen. This is what I love about the screen. They're going to come out and they're going to get all the way in front and build the wall for McClatcher. So if McClatcher can make one guy miss right there, who's Peyton Palurro, then he gets behind the wall and he's going to go for a conversion. 
and a big yardage. This Washington offensive line so good. Coleman gets outside and finally is upended by Charleston White as he gets close to the 30-yard line. Got to understand if you're the offense here, if I'm Jake Browning, I'm getting in the huddle and almost every snap, I'm saying to those five guys up front, this game is in your hands. We control the line of scrimmage and run the ball. We win the game. Second and six at the 28. Here's Browning over the middle. Caught at the 35. Will Disley. And a first down. Anytime you see a blitzing linebacker as a quarterback, what you want to do is replace him with the football. Here comes a linebacker, ball out right away. That's a prepared quarterback. That's what I love about Jake Browning. You never see the indecision in his play. He knows where to go. He knows where to go with the football. First down. At the 36. Browning hands it off to Coleman, running right. And Coleman chopped down by Darian Moulton. Coleman in high school actually played for coach Andrew Jones at Lompoc, the alma mater of legendary Washington tailback Napoleon Kaufman. Coleman a really good back, is in particular Gus when he's in that downhill mode, mode, and he is today, averaging 10 a pop. Second and eight at the 38. Coleman again. Strings it out, turns it off, breaks tackles, picks up a first down. Well done, LeVon Coleman. Well, there are times when the run play is blocked perfectly, and then there are times when it's not blocked at all. And on this play, this is when you are BYOB. Be your own blocker. And this is all Coleman. Finds a crease on the outside, missed tackles by Washington State, and he ends up moving the chains on a play like look, that looked like it was going to go for a loss of yardage. He's thick, 5'11", 228, 49 yards rushing. First and ten. Play fake. Browning looks back side. Caught the 30. What a throw. Aaron Fuller. He hit him in full stride and their flags in the backfield. 23-yard gain. Personal foul. Roughing the passer. Defense number 51. 15 yards added to the end of the play. Automatic first down. Frankie Louvu. Luvu is going to come around the edge, but I want you to take a look at this route. He starts inside. Look at him get the separation. That's a great route from a young player, a true freshman, Aaron Fuller, who's able to get the separation, get his feet down for a big play, and then at the end, Browning took a shot. There's Luvu coming in, and a bit late, maybe a little bit late. Browning certainly embellished a little bit to draw that laundry. First and ten. At the Cougar 15, Browning flings it out and incomplete. Gaskin, the intended receiver. And they're probably better off that he didn't catch that. Peyton Pelour was right there, would have brought him down for a loss. It probably would have been second in about 14, but as it stands now, they're still with the change. Remember, this drive started all the way back at the two. The two yard line, Gus, and they have methodically moved this ball down the field. Second and ten. Coleman with room. Coleman. Touchdown, Washington. Coleman second of the day. Boy, this guy has the hot hand. Remember, it's not his body, but the ball that's got to cross the plane just over that pylon. It certainly looks, being in that right arm, that that was a great call and that Coleman got in for the touchdown. 
This is a better look, yeah, certainly. If their continued water bottles flow from the stands either to the sideline or on the field, Washington State will be assessed with an unsportsmanlike conduct foul. This will be the only warning. It's the fans there in the end zone were throwing some water bottles onto the field, which is certainly frustrating for all involved. So Cameron Van Winkle comes in to attempt the extra point. And it's good. How about Washington? They started their drive at the two. They go 10 plays, 98 yards, eating up four minutes and 41 seconds. And the Huskies lead it 42 to 17. College football presented by Jared is sponsored by Direct TV. If you call yourself a sports fan, you gotta get Direct TV. Bye. KFC's new $10 chicken share is a bucket for two. KFC, it's finger licking good. And by Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. We're watching one of the best teams in the United States, the Washington Huskies who just went on a 10-play, 98-yard drive. Fossum. And Fossum wrapped up at the 20. Let's go to Greg Wolf in Los Angeles for a game break. All right, back to TCU, Texas, a game that you can see on FS1 right now. Charlie Strong, if he is done at Texas, could be going out on a three-game losing streak. Kenny Hill, 41-yard touchdown run. Hill with Puts TCU up 17 to 9, fourth quarter. Gus, Joel, back to you. All right, thank you very much. The Cougars now at their own 21 yard line. First down and 10. Look far underneath. Caught. And this is Robert Lewis. He gains eight. His defense struggled for a couple of games getting to the quarterback. They were good last week, six sacks against ASU. They did that with blitzing, but you're not going to blitz the air raid. You're not going to send a lot of pressures towards Luke Falk. He's too good. They're trying to rely on that down, down four. Second and two. Robert Lewis once again, and he's not backwards. Ben Burkirvan. Let's see where his four progress has him. Thought he was going to be short. Yeah, right about 30. They need to get to the 31 to move the chains. Burkirvan closed fast. Burkirvan Another one of these guys that in high school was a sprinter on the track team. He actually anchored the 4x100 team that set a school record at Menlo Park in California. Third down and one. Fall over the middle and incomplete, so that'll bring up fourth down and one. That no doubt, and there's no doubt what Washington State is going to do. Well, they've got to go for it, and, and certainly Mike Leach is going to. He set the precedent all game long. That battle between Sidney Jones and Gabe Marks has been just outstanding during the course of this game. That's where Falk was trying to go there. Fourth down. And the Cougars need a yard at their own 30. Good fall. And incomplete. They turn it over on downs. Tavares Martin, the intended receiver, Kevin King covering. And now Washington has the football at the Washington State 30 yard line. Live by the pass, die by the pass. Coming down the stretch, here are some players to keep an eye on for the wide open Nissan Heisman watch. Lamar Jackson has opened up the door for everybody with the way that they kind of struggled down the stretch. Jabril Peppers and that showdown with Ohio State has a great chance to get on a lot of ballots. And don't forget about D.D. Westbrook and Baker Mayfield. These two guys have been sensational after those two losses earlier. First down and 10 at the 30-yard line. 
Browning delivers down the field and incomplete. John Ross, the intended receiver. You're a Heisman voter. If you had to vote today, who'd you vote for? I don't, I don't know. I honestly. No, if you had to vote today, who would you vote for? I'm glad I don't have to vote for today. I would probably vote for D.D. Westbrook with what he's done. I am in the the minority in that sentiment. Well, who would you vote for today? I'm for Michigan. <laughs> That's all you got to say. That's all you got to say. Oh, man. Second and 10 at the 30. No bias allowed. <laughs> Particularly next year. That's right. <laughs> Changes. As Gaskin runs the ball and gains seven yards. I'll tell you what, though. This Washington team is coached by, I don't know. Everybody tries to say that. Mike Leach is a genius. I think he's got just as much genius in him. Chris Peterson, you know, what I like about Chris Peterson is that he's unapologetic about doing it his way. He came into Washington, and it didn't get the amount of pub that Charlie Strong's entry to Texas got, but he said, listen, I'm going to win with all kind of guys. He cleaned up the program from his perspective, and here they are, a 10-1. and one. Third down and three, going for the home run again, and incomplete for McClatcher. We got to get Coach Peterson to loosen up and talk to us a little bit. He kind of shuts us out. I don't think he's going to do he's that. He's not going to do it. I don't he? think he's going to do that. Uh, he certainly has earned the right to do it however he wants to do it. Yeah, and even you think about it, a couple of years ago, he's got Marcus Peters who went on to go and be the NFL's defensive rookie of the year, and he said, listen, he cut this, it. Yeah, this is not working. You know, your attitude and our system is not working. And he said, basically said, let's agree to disagree. Cameron Van Winkle into a tip to 41 yarder. And it's good. Nice little draw on that ball. And Washington adds to their totals 45 to 17. No change in the top four of the college football playoff rankings this week. It was Clemson at three, Michigan, at, excuse me, Clemson at four, Michigan at three. Ohio State at number two, and Alabama at number one, as they should be. It's the best team in college football this year, but Washington just outside of that top four, and Gus with the loser of that game tomorrow, certainly falling out of the top four. You could expect, as a Husky fan, there's a good shot that come Tuesday night, this Huskies team is going to be in the top four in the country. If they can win this game and this ball kicked out of bounds. So Washington State will have it at the 35. So there's Free no. kick out of bounds. Washington State takes the ball in the 35 yard line. First down. So there's no way that the winner or loser of the big game tomorrow in Columbus will stay in the top four. No, I don't see it because that would be their second loss each. Uh, I certainly believe that they would fall behind Washington. I, I would say the precarious spot that Washington would be in, and this is not an opinion as much as an observation, is that if Ohio State is the team that wins the game tomorrow. They do not play in the Big Ten Championship if Penn State beats Michigan State. That's right. And so if Penn State then were to win the Big Ten Championship, you would have a team in Penn State with a Big Ten Conference crown, a head-to-head -head win over Ohio State, yet two losses. So who's out, Ohio State, Penn State, or Washington, or Clemson? It, there becomes a huge conundrum there where there's four viable teams and deserving teams for three spots. Of course, assuming Alabama wins at least one of their next two. Chris Peterson telling us on a conference call earlier this year that he wasn't concerned about the rankings because he said if his team took care of business, everything would work out. Okay, so let me get into my opinion piece. That's absolutely what I think should happen. If you're a one-loss Pac-12 champion and you've played nine conference games in the regular season, a tenth in a championship game, you should no doubt go to the college football play. First down to 10 at the 35. Falk throwing it out wide to James Williams. He picks up a first down. And it's slammed to the ground by Kevin King. His defense is as active and fast a defense as you'll see in this conference. 
Statistically one of the best in the conference including scoring defense giving up just under 18 points a game and they've played great today. A couple of goal line stands. First of turnovers as well. First down at the 47. Falk. Incomplete. I believe that Washington can beat any of the top teams in the nation. That includes Alabama. That includes Ohio State, Michigan, Clemson, if Penn State gets there. But the only way they can do it is if they commit to running the football and stop trying to trick them. Well, that's exactly what they would tell you as well. They ask them about the USC game. Chris Peterson, Jonathan Smith, the offensive coordinator, say we didn't establish and commit to the run like we should have. And you've seen that today, rushing the football. They've been tremendous, over 140 yards. Falk over the middle, and intercepted by Buddha. Rub his belly for good luck, folks. This kid is a Sunday player. His second interception of the season. And he played it perfectly. Absolutely perfectly. Let's Undercut. Conduct. Conduct. Number eight of the defense. 15 yards, first down Washington. They get a personal foul there, but watch Buda as he's going to undercut this play. Here he is on the right side, and he's defending, and then he goes underneath the receiver. That's just too easy. I mean, just such a good job of understanding what the offense is trying to do. He gets to the football and gets another interception. It's his second on the year. Washington State has turned it over 10 times in the last two Apple Cups. Three today. Man, this Buda Baker. Boy, he can play. He can play, and he's tough. That's what I love about safeties that can go down to the line of scrimmage. They can cover in space. This is a guy with a tough background. His brother got out of jail just before that USC game. That was the first game he was able to come see since Buda was in seventh grade. Gaskin running the football. Isaac Dotson with the tackle. And another one of these sprinters, Buda Baker was. You look at their bios, you go through this Washington team. Gus, every guy in high school was the anchor leg of the 4 by 100 He was a sprinting star in the 200. They all can run, and that's the way they play defense. John Fast. Ross, yes, John Ross, one of them. But Washington needs to get it in this season, Joel, and I'll tell you why because those guys at the University of South Central have some dudes. <laughs> South Central? I mean, USC, excuse me. <laughs> Second down and nine at the 30. Here's the pitch. It is in South Central, so you're right. <laughs> they do have some dudes at USC. Dave and Clay Helton is coaching them up. You know, it's interesting. We talk about Washington having to establish and commit to the run. Well, that's what USC needed to do early in the year, and that's what they were able to do, and that's what they did to Washington in that game up in Seattle a few weeks ago. USC playing Notre Dame tomorrow in South Bend. Third down and two at the 37. Mike Leach looking at his notes. Wildcat. Gaskin spinning and it'll be denied. Or will he? Looks like he did get the first down on second effort. He needed to just cross the 39 yard line by the near side official and his spot. It looks like they're going to give it to him and they'll move the chains again. They're just trying to get the numbers here out of the Wildcat and allow Gaskin to go get the first down. And it wasn't that initial play, but it was the push from the offensive line getting some help that finally got him across that 39 yard line to move the chains. I got to give a lot of credit to this offensive line. They are good, Joel. They did a great job today. Coleman Shelton, the center, he's played all of the offensive line positions in his career. He was the team's lineman of the year a year ago. He's played terrific today, number 79. First and 10 of the 39. And Coleman running. Let's take a look at the Pac-12 standings, folks. Your Colorado Buffaloes, your alma mater, with a huge game tomorrow on Fox. 
against Utah in Boulder. You mean they? They. You're right. I was wrong last week. I said you said we one time, and I was wrong. Colorado's got a chance to beat Utah and go. USC's done with their Pac-12 schedule, so they're just waiting. Regardless of what happens, obviously, in that Notre Dame game, if Colorado wins, they're in. Colorado loses. SC will head up, and they'll face what looks to be like Washington, as we just witnessed or witnessing a Pac-12 semifinal game here in the Apple Cup. Second and four. Coleman again. And another first down. Look at the running and the blocking. The physicality of the Washington Huskies. That is what can win them a national championship. When you combine an offensive line that's going to win the line of scrimmage and create a big hole with a back that can make people miss at the second level, you've got what I would call an electric or explosive run game. That's when you've got a chance to get explosive runs. Different story on the Washington State sideline. First down and 10 at the 45. Coleman, eight carries, 80 yards, and two touchdowns running. 4.30 and counting. Coleman finds another hole. And Palour comes up and makes the hard hit. I think what gets lost, Gus, in, in year to year, week to week, one play at a time, one game at a time, you can lose perspective pretty quickly, not only as a fan base, but a player and a coach. And, and I would just remind everybody where these programs came from. We've seen within the last, I'll call it decade, 10 years, in 2008, these two teams play with a combined one win. We just witnessed, witnessed a Pac-12 semifinal game. And Washington State should be proud about where they have come and where they are. Two masterminds on the sideline for both these teams. As Miles Gaskin runs it straight ahead and picks up a couple. And I know we just saw Gabe Marks and he'll be going on to hopefully bigger and better things in the National Football League. But this team has a lot to look forward to. Luke Falk is a junior. There's been some talk about potentially going to the NFL, but it would be ridiculous. I'm still learning. To, according to his coach. Exactly. And he didn't say it would be ridiculous for Luke, but he said it would be ridi ridiculous. For it is ridiculous. Any underclassman quarterback to come out early. That's what he said. He believes that it is ridiculous when the underclassman quarterbacks lead for the draft and so that'll be the advice that Luke Falk is getting in the next few weeks. They're down to two this time Coleman ambushed and if Luke Falk were to come back some think that he is definitely a NFL quarterback and according to Mike Leach when I asked him do you think he's a first round pick he said it's idiosyncratic. Right. I love that word. As, as only Mike Leach can say. Uh -huh. right? Meaning, essentially, it's so circumstantial. What teams need quarterbacks? How many quarterbacks are coming out that possess that amount of talent? You know, if you leave on the right year and there are five, six, seven teams that are desperate for a first-round quarterback and you are the top three or four quarterback, you're going in the first round. You can be a top four quarterback in the draft and not get Delay taken game. in the first round Offense. based on need. Five so. penalty, fourth down. That's what I find always so interesting is people say, well, is he first-round talent? Is he first-round talent? Well, sure. Doesn't mean he's going to get selected in the first round, though. Um, that's what I think is hard for kids who are facing the choice, and Luke Falk will at least have to think about it after this season where he's thrown for over 4,000 yards and 37 touchdowns. Some great quarterbacks have played here at Washington State. We had a chance to talk to one in the hallway at halftime, Drew Bledsoe, but you look back at Mark Rippon and Ryan Leaf. Just wonderful college players. Mark Rippon going on to win a Super Bowl. Also Drew Bledsoe winning a Super Bowl. 45 to 17. Cougars on the field right after this. Fox College Football presented by Jared is sponsored by Intel. You know about it, now do something about it. Upgrade to a new PC. And don't forget to check out Breaking the Huddle with Joel Klatt on Facebook Live every Tuesday at 7.30 Eastern, sponsored by Dr. Pepper. Can't wait for this week as we'll be rolling into Indianapolis getting ready for the Big Ten Championship game. And 
you know, we talk about anything that has to do with college football, and there's a story I want to touch on just real quick. That's a view of the Washington State radio broadcast booth. That's Jason Gesser on the left, great Cougar quarterback for a long time, but broadcaster Bob Robertson is missing his first game as a Cougar announcer. He began in 1964. He's been going strong for 567 consecutive Washington State broadcasts. And an interception. He wouldn't be happy with that. He would not, but Bob is ill. He's 85 years old. And if you're watching, Bob, we're thinking about you. We hope you get well soon. I know your Cougars made you proud all year long, even though they're going to fall short here today. As Jordan Miller comes up with the interception. Third Falk interception of the game. And Washington is starting to feel it. A Pac-12 championship berth is a minute and 48 seconds away. They'll either play Colorado or USC. How do you think the Buffs would fare against this Washington team? Yeah, I, I think USC is the more talented team. Colorado is veteran. They're tough. They're gritty. But Washington is is a better football team than Colorado. And. Husky fans, I'm not trying to put words in your mouth here, but I think I would rather see the Buffs than the Trojans. Because that Trojans team that is playing right now, far they've, different than the one that lost three games. They've got dudes. Their X's are really good, and it's hard for anybody's O's to stop. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Leach, what a fine season it's been for this team, especially when you consider Washington State lost their first two games. And our progressive performance of the game goes to right after this. The Washington Husky defense. There were plenty of great performances. This was hard to decide. But when you have two fourth down stops inside the one yard line, you're going to get the accolades. Three interceptions, a fumble recovery, a couple of sacks. But more importantly, those two huge goal line stands. They held Washington State to 334 yards, only 65 on the ground. It's a potent offense, folks, and they ran into Buda Baker and his buddies, and they were terrific today. Congratulations to the Washington Huskies, who are going to win the Pac-12 North. Forty five to seventeen Washington comes into Pullman and the Huskies win the Apple Cup secure a berth in the Pac-12 championship game. Folks this is Chris Peterson's third year. You might be seeing this on a more consistent basis. Congratulations to Washington, all the support staff, all the fans. They've done a tremendous job. It's the first team other than Oregon or Stanford to win this division. All right, let's go down to Shannon with Coach Pete. Well, the Gatorade bath has already ensued down here. You know, Coach, this past week, you took everything off your players' plates. You let them focus on this one game. How much do you think the emotional preparation played into how they performed? A lot, you know, you can't play this game without the right kind of emotion and they prepared well and thought the mindset was right from the start to the finish. Complacency is the biggest fear of a coach. Each week you guys have improved and gotten better. Where did you get better tonight? Well, we'll watch the tape, but I thought the guys played hard. We were really efficient on offense in the first half. They held the ball. I think we had the ball four plays in the third quarter, so they did a good job there. And, um, our defense, you know, made plays when they need to on the goal line and good team win. I know you don't like talk about standings and rankings, but here I go with one game left. Where do you think that you guys have earned your right to be in that top four? I don't know. Well, we, we got another big game next week and it'll all play out like it's supposed to. No closing thoughts for the committee, huh? No, we got more ball to play before we talk about that. Thanks so much, Thank coach. You. All right. Thank you very much. 45 to 17 the final we will be back to wrap it up right after this welcome back for the taste of winning sponsored by coca-cola 45 to 17 washington wins the apple cup and they will be heading 
to the Pac-12 championship game. Gus Johnson along with Joel Klatt. This Washington team may be peaking at the right time. They look good. They do, and, and you want to be playing your best football in November. You want to peak at the end of the season, which they're able to do. And it's almost... Uh, benefit in disguise when you lose a game like USC a couple of weeks ago and they're able to go and fix those problems because the team that we just saw had fixed the problems that we saw against the Trojans earlier this season. Their quarterback was great, their defense was great, and more importantly, their run game was terrific today. Well, a big game for Jake Browning, especially in the first half. Let's go downstairs to Shannon. Jake Browning, you know, you guys looked sharp from the very first snap of this game. I'm going to let you brag on your guys up front. How much did they set the tone for everything tonight for you guys? Yeah, I think our best games are when we when we can run the ball well, and obviously we did. I thought they worked really hard on it. They did a lot of stuff up front with a lot of games, and I thought they were very prepared and played really hard and ran the ball really well. You guys have really taken it one game at a time, haven't looked at standings, have focused on just you, but how does that change with just one game to go? I think it's easier because you really only have one game left, so, you know. Uh, we'll see who we're going to play. I'm not really sure who it is, but uh, you know we'll be prepared. Take tomorrow, get our bodies back, and then get ready for uh, Pac-12 championship. Congratulations on this Thank one. Thank you. Thank you. All right, the Apple Cup remains in Seattle with the Washington Huskies. Partner, your final thoughts. Hey, committee, this Huskies team is really good. 45 to 17, the final. Washington defeats Washington State. Tomorrow, the Pac-12 South title is on the line as the ninth-ranked Colorado Buffaloes need to beat Utah to advance to the Pac-12 championship game. Coverage begins at 7 Eastern on Fox. That wraps it up from Pullman. For Joel Klatt, Shannon Spank, up Gus Johnson saying so long. <laughs>